Uh, I see a red light in the front, so that means I'm recording. So, um, this is the backyard of uh, one of many backyards that I use for um, all the films that I've done. So, the central character is always me, Thomas, and the minor characters are different people. As long as they react to me, then that's fine. But uh, essentially, everything I do is about myself. <laughs> All the stories are about myself, and I use other people to realize my vision, as I mentioned before. So this backyard plays a particularly important role in the picture I'm doing uh, throughout April and into August. It's called Hum. H-U-M. Now, why is this picture so significant? Because it's a story about uh, life. It's a story about the living of life. Whether you live in a palatial estate, a mansion, an apartment, a cardboard box, in a box lodged underneath some freeway, that's what Hum is about. It's not about beautiful people, although many of the people in the film are quite nice and quite beautiful, but it's essentially a story about me, how my brain works. I've shown you um, different pieces of hum, different pigments of my imagination, many of which will be in the final project, because the final project involves Mr. Bob Mitchell, founder of Mitchell's Boys Choir, at one time known as the Choir to the Stars, and Thomas, Thomas. Thomas is known as a creative genius out of Cleveland. At one time, I ranked in the top one half of one percent of all the Catholic school kids in the nation. That was in 61. I don't know what happened to me since then. <laughs> but I'm here now. And you know who I am. Now I've got three channels in addition to my main channel. I've got Dad Hilton MPS, DC Pendick, Angelina Paul, and New Drum. New Drum will have a lot of my poetry. Angelina, Angel, Angel, Angel Tina will, might have a lot of poetry, and I think a new, new Drum will probably be a cardinal in the Catholic Church. Did I say that? New Drum will probably be the next Pope. I'm sorry. New Drum will probably take the spot of Clarence Thomas. Did I say that? No. Clarence Thomas hasn't said much, but, but uh, Thomas does. Dad Hilton MPS says a lot, as you know from watching my videos. <laughs> He doesn't mince any words, and you all can attest to that. So what I would like for you to do is come into my wall for a moment, hear the birds chirping, hear that? Hear that Lady Seneca? Hear that Lisa Milano? Hear that Duke Righteous? Thomas is working again. You can't say that Thomas hasn't been doing anything for the past two months, Duke Righteous, because Thomas has been busy working. I'm on Google YouTube, live video, MySpace, live clip, stick'em, and something else whose name I've forgotten. And that's enough for today. Cut. Did you cut? Oh, you're going to do, oh, you want, I'll tell you what then. I tell, wait a minute, I'll tell you what. What you do, uh, unleash the locks that you put on it, and uh, pick me up over here. You got to move in for a, can you move in tighter? Move in, uh, move in for a tighter shot. Just, and then I'll walk into it here. And then you can pan me. I'm just going to walk. Back and forth over here, Mom. Right, that's all I'm going to do. Four stops. And you can either lock the camera or pan with me. Okay, run the camera for five seconds and then I'll go. Let me know and call action when you're ready.
my dad put this pool in in 1973. It used to be a garage here. My dad loved to work. I thought he enjoyed tearing down this garage, so I just watched him. He was sweating like a pig. He was sweating like a horse, sweating like a camel. I thought he enjoyed it. That was my dad. I got him a part in Red Valley, a Gordon Parks movie, in 1974. 1974 to 1975, we were in Austin, Texas, on a picture called Red Belly. Red Belly. Got my dad a job as an extra on the picture. The production manager, Jack Grossberg, who used to be an associate producer with Woody Allen and, and also uh, associate producer and production manager, was the uh, production manager for Lead Belly. He wanted to pay all the extras on Lead Belly 25 bucks a day. My dad came to me in the editing room and told me what uh, Mr. Grossberg wanted to pay. And I told him, looked at Dad, and I said, Dad, go speak to Mr. Parks. Mr. Dad left. I mean, my dad left. <laughs> I spoke with Mr. Parks. That next morning, every extra on the picture got the away rate for Hollywood extras of 424 bucks a day. My dad can be seen in Red Belly in the middle of the jail cell when Blind Lemon Jefferson comes in to see Red Belly in jail. And, and uh, Blind Lemon says, Lid? Lid? You there, Lid? And the camera pans, and in the center of that pan is my dad. He looks like a Cuban. Looked like a Dominican Republican. Didn't quite look like Castro, but he's been accosted by the police many times because he looked like a South American. That was my dad. So that's all I'm going to say for this video because I want to keep it short. But just know that boom is coming through. Hum is coming through. Hum may be coming in on the left, and he may make a pass up to the right. Or whichever way you slice the cake, hum is coming through. And hum is new. Now hold it. Let me walk out of frame. Yeah. Okay, what do we do now? Turn the power off? Yeah, now, did you look like pause and let me walk out or did you just cut the power? It's easier to cut if you, you follow and then. Are you still running? Yep, still running. Oh, well, if you're still running, Mom, <laughs> uh, at, the bar, at the top is a red button. You want to press the red button and that turns it off. Well, wait just for a minute. Let me. Keep or you, or you can, wait a minute. Hey, mothers, you love them and leave them. You ready? Yep. Okay. Off you go. Can you see me? I see you. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Is it too loud? No, you're fine. All right. Well, this today is the 9th of uh, April, 2007, and the time is like five minutes of seven. Working with my son, our son, Tumas who is a fantastic uh, producer, writer, humanitarian, eclectic photographer, um, son, friend, whatever you want to think of it, he's the best. And we thought we would uh, work out this camera and make sure we don't forget how to work things and help him along his way of doing whatever he's going to be doing. And this is getting more interesting as I learn more about working with the camera. This is one way of keeping a legacy going. This is one way of remembering uh, the good times, the cool times. And as a matter of fact, Thomas is the one who put the pool in here for his dad and his family. And um, 
now Clyde and I have been married since a year, and we are keeping things up. Okay, it's not the initial cost of things, but it's the upkeep. So Cloud has been very instrumental and helpful and loving and enjoyable. He used to swim in this pool along with me, but the weather's been so cold, the water's too cold to really enjoy the pool. So once we get the weather's warmer and the pool is warmer, we all hope to get back in and get our exercise moving along and inviting any of the neighbors who wish to join us to get their exercise and enjoyment, that's fine. In the meantime, we're enjoying the beautiful yard that so many of the family members have helped to uh, cultivate through the years, the bird of paradise, giant bird of paradise, all types of cactus, uh, ice plants, lime trees, lemon trees, banana trees, fish ponds, just a beautiful background is very arresting if you want to use it that way. And we do enjoy it. We've had many parties back here. And we had one recently for the choir, actually, which turned out to be very nice. Incidentally, I have on a new hat. The hat is really Thomas's, but I'm enjoying wearing it. This is a hat for uh, many occasions, and one of the occasions is to make this film. I think and I hope it's going to turn out the way he wants it, if not better. In the meantime, I will say, God bless you, Thomas. Thank you for being our second friend, second son, because you didn't have any choice in the matter of being second, first, or fifth, or seventh. It didn't matter. It's who you are now that counts. So we're right here, right along with you. Hopefully everything will turn out the way you actually wanted it to go. And until you get your um, Clyde's and Bob Mitchell's, uh, 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 what do you call it, comments on life, then I'll say hasta la vista, baby. And God bless you, and thanks for being my son. Thank you.
seven seconds. I've done a lot since uh, the last time I spoke with Mr. Mitchell, which was a week ago. It seems like seven years since I last saw him. <laughs> but there's something about Mr. Mitchell which always seems like he's an old friend. Uh, I haven't seen him in a long time. I had first met him in the late 60s when my brother Frederick was a member of Mitchell's Boys Choir. My brother Frederick at one time was one of two featured soloists and he, he sang at um, Marlo Thomas' wedding to Phil Donahue because Marlo Thomas heard him sing someplace else and uh, she was very impressed with his voice. So she asked him personally, would you sing in my wedding? So of course my brother said yes, because he loved uh, entertainment, he loved simple singing, dance. Uh, so that was my brother Fred. I uh, remember him when he uh, first grew up, when he first came home actually in 1954, October 2nd, 1954 was his birthday. Fred is no longer with us, but uh, I am, and uh, I'm not a singer, I'm a writer. I have a lot of blog spots at blogspot.com. I, I have a lot of poetry at Edit Red. I have several spots on MySpace, about four spots on YouTube. I comment a lot on people's videos on YouTube. I'm probably one of the best uh, commenter on people's videos, so I do a lot of writing. So without further ado, I'm going to continue my conversation with Mr. Bob Mitchell of Mitchell's Voice Choir. Uh, he, you've seen him You've seen some of his videos on YouTube, and some of you have commented, some of you have not, some of you have seen them, but many of you have not. But remember one thing, that I have a goal. I said that I would get 300 subscribers in April. As of today, April 16th, 2007, I have 325. On my birthday on June 7th, I expect to have 2,887 subscribers. So you know what you have to do. Now, on my birthday in 2009, I expect to have a million subscribers. So you know what you have to do. Do I need to draw you a diagram? something. <clears throat> I think I'm overdoing that uh, weak thing. I'm starting to hear voices, people pounding on the door. I think that there's somebody there. When I go there, there's nobody there. DC Fenwick is over there in that corner. Angel Tina Four is over there. Dad Hilton MPS. I know who I am. That's me. But uh, these other people, uh, DC Fenwick, Angel Tina Four, somebody else. New Drum. At night, I, I, I start to hear these voices. Sometimes I even hear them in the daytime, so I know I'm going kind of daddy. I knew a couple minutes ago, I thought I heard somebody hammering on the door saying, Thomas, Thomas, and I know that's not my name. And why would they pound, pound, pound as if uh, I'm living in a huge apartment building? I'm living in a little box, you know? Uh, well, maybe, she, maybe that person has some reason for doing that. When I'm in this little place, it's like my sanctuary. You know what I'm saying? I don't mean to say that you know what I'm saying, because of course you know what I'm saying. But, uh, I think I'm overdoing that. I'll see you in a week. I wish somebody would give me another line of dialogue to say, I don't think there's a writer around here someplace. I'm going to try and read.
So that was Mr. Bob Mitchell, founder of Mitchell's Boys Choir. I was fortunate to have him uh, speak about his life. He's lived an interesting life. The interesting thing about life is you never know what you're doing, or you never know that you're doing something that's monumental. He's got 95 years on this planet, and um, I've got, uh, I'll soon have 59 years on this planet. So, him is uh, about numbers. Coming from Cleveland out of D.C., Cleveland has a reputation for having a numbers racket. D.C. is known for having some real fast cats. I used to be real quick when I was a kid. And when I was younger, I was real quick. Real quick in basketball. Real quick in football. Fast and very, very quick. I can't tell you how quick I was, but I was almost as quick as lightning. And that's pretty quick. Today, I'm pleased to say that we're going to have our, our 325th subscriber shout out video. 325 subscribers. The last time I made a shout out video, we had 292 subscribers to. Dad Hilton MPS. The interesting thing about Dad is the reason I chose that name is because my father is, I call him Dad, D O D. Hilton, H I L T O N, is my father's middle name, or was my father's middle name. My dad died May 22nd, 1980. Three months before I stopped working at uh, Warner Brothers on Altered States. My last day of work at Altered States for Warner Brothers was either August 22nd or August 28th. The producer, Howard Godfrey, um, got rid of everybody except for me. At the end of the picture, I was the last one terminated from the entire picture. We had uh, about 100 people working on the picture. When I started, Howard hired me as the first person in post-production. He hired me before he had the editors. The person who wound up editing the picture was Stuart Baird from England. Stuart edited The Exorcist, uh, not The Exorcist, but Superman and The Omen. And uh, Stuart is now directing. There's a fellow named Eric Jenkins who has the title of editor, but Eric didn't edit the picture, he edited a couple scenes in the picture. I edited, um, well, I started to edit uh, one picture where, where uh, Emily is getting ready to drink some wine, and Stuart Baird came rushing into the editing room, and we had a trailer at Warner Brothers, and he demanded that I stop. So uh, I stopped. But the interesting thing about me is I let my apprentice editor, Kerry Coghlan, Edit. My assistant, Arthur Fournier, is an executive producer for uh, Law and Order. He calls me his apprentice when he introduced me to his French wife. Brothers are strange that way sometimes. I was the one who hired Arthur. That's it for today. We're going to do the shout out video. Thank you very much. Talk soon. Bye-bye.
Была слегка добра и теплоты Я для тебе все еще дитина И для меня найдорожча ты Ты тебе я так боюсь, я на тебе хочу надвигаться, за здоровье Богу помолюсь. Дай, 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 Oh, oh, oh. 